tell you, right? No fair, no fair-minded American wants to deny women the same opportunities and rights as men. But you know, when you see some of these man-hating feminists out there depriving men of their rights simply because we happen to be men, I say that's enough, pal, all right? Or sweetheart or darling. And the American people are saying enough, too. Feminism has failed. Next on the Morton Downey Jr. <laughs> Let me introduce you to the star of our show on the uh, home base with us uh, tonight, the leading feminist attorney in the United States of America, Gloria Allred. Good evening, Gloria. Good evening, Martin. Nice to see you. You know, there are a lot of people these days, Gloria, myself included, that think the feminist uh, movement has fallen flat on its ass. Would you agree with that? Absolutely not. No? I don't think so. And as a matter of fact, this is a perfect show in which to discuss whether feminism is dead. Because it's such a joke to even think that it's dead that a show which is an entire joke is a perfect place to discuss it. Oh, she's going to get spicy tonight. Right? All right. All right. Got one of them, got one of them feisty broads in the studio. Gloria. Jimmy the Greek, Martin. Oh, I don't worry about that. The Greek was a geek, all right? Gloria, let's get specific here, all right? And, and let me go to this. I think the nomination of Geraldine Ferraro in 1984 had all you feminists dancing in the streets. Now, by the time Geraldine got through whining her way across America, Walter Mondale was in dead and feminism was in full retreat. Why don't you and the feminists... Uh, that created uh, Gloria, uh, I shouldn't say Gloria Ferraro, why don't you admit that you're dead? Because we're alive and well and we're living in the hearts of millions of American women and men. Those people who care about their daughters, those people who care about their sisters and their mothers and their aunts, and yes, those people who care about men too. Even men such as yourself, Morton Down. But you've got to admit, you've got to admit, Gloria, you, you've, you've got to admit this, all right? Ferraro would have never been considered if she was a male, all right? She was a two-term... She was a two-term nothing Congress person who had accomplished nothing. There were other women out there. There were other women out there, but they weren't. They didn't get the support of the National Organization of Wimps. I mean, women. All right. They, they didn't get the support. Look at you had you had your great moment in the sun. Why are you dead? Simply because of this. In 1984, you finally got that woman on the Democratic ticket because you had a wimp at the head of the ticket who was, who was intimidated into putting her on. Ronald Reagan came out totally against the ERA and feminist movement. And the bulk of the votes that Ronald Reagan received to elect him in a landslide were not from men. They were from your sisters who were rebunking what you guys wanted to pass on. Yeah. Don't you, think, don't you think that says you're dead? Now, that says you're wrong, and let me tell you why, Morton. The reason is, Geraldine Ferraro, if she had been a man, would have been nominated at least 200 years earlier. And she wasn't nominated because she was a well, woman. Well, I agree she looked pretty old, but she didn't look old. <laughs> Cheryl, you had, other, you had other women who were more qualified. You, for instance, were more qualified than Geraldine Ferraro. Well, thank you, but I, I don't think so. But let me just say this. Uh, in spite of the fact that I like you, I have to say, your jokes are even older than what you're stating is true Well, here. they're not as old as you. President Reagan was elected not because he was against the Equal Rights Amendment, but in spite of his opposition to the Equal Rights Amendment. It's but so it was your sisters who voted for him. Well, you don't have much support among the women in this country. Well, let me just say, the women in this country, by the way, are, for the most part, not in this audience, with a Why? few exceptions. Why? Why are they not in yeah. this audience? Perhaps because they don't want to dignify your show with their presence. I don't know why, but I can tell you that. But here's one of the leading feminists in America who dignified the show with her presence. And for that, 
For that, you got to say she's a gutsy woman. Well, let me just say, I wish they would come to your show because I think it's important that their, their voice also be heard. I think so, too. I think they should be heard. I think they should come on shows like this and stop wasting these t their time with Marlo Thomas's uh, husband, uh, who isn't, who isn't going to accomplish anything for them. Now, you say that the women's movement is alive and well in America, yes. right? I say that I think women are alive and well in America, but they're not voting with their hormones as you and the other women in this movement would have them do. They're mo voting with their brains. Well, I don't know what you mean by that unless you're in a hormonal crisis now yourself, Morton. So perhaps... <laughs> That almost, that almost sounds like an invitation, like you'd like to find out. No, not particularly, but you probably don't know that men have a cycle each month similar to women. I recognize that, and I'm going through mine tonight. I know. <laughs> Hope you don't collapse on so the So watch out, Gloria. <laughs> Come back when you can afford me, will you? But in any event... There uh, is a price set on it then, huh? Yeah, the price is a belief in equality, caring about I believe personally that. and marriage. I believe in equality men and women i care about men and women well, then we but i don't that. care about women who are now trying to put men through the same thing they accuse men of putting them through for the last 200 years in this country and women are not... well women are not trying to do that the women's movement is not trying to do that it is the only movement that has cared about equality for women and men and it cares when men are the victims of sex discrimination, as well as when women are the victims of sex discrimination. It just so happens that more often it's females who are the victims of sex discrimination rather than males. But where men are, we also represent them, we also care about them, and we hope they care about us too. I, I talk to hundreds of women every single week, and women tell me almost unanimously that they hate working for other women because the other women are the ones who hold them back and not the men. Well. You're not talking about most women when you're talking about just those few women who have voiced that. And I want you to know, too, we have been taught, we have been socialized, we have been brought up to compete with other women for the favor of a scarce resource, so that is men, so that we can end up marrying men, attracting the few men, because that's the only way that most women have been able to gain economic mobility in this country, because we've been forced into just a very few sex-segregated, low-paying jobs. And I think when we can open up jobs to all women, all jobs, we will stop competing with each other for the scarce resource men, and I think we can love each other and thereby love ourselves. In other words, you'll stop competing among yourselves for men. Well, hopefully, we'll understand that there are other things to compete for, like jobs, like self-respect, like independence. But right now, for most women, that's the only way they're ever going to have a nice home, uh, a future for their children, if they get security. It and it's a terrible and ugly fact of life for women. And often they will tell their daughters, you better get married because if you don't, you may live in poverty. And they may right. be right. Next, what we're going to do is we want to explore some of the reasons uh, that myself and our audience and other people feel that feminism is failing. Stay tuned. <laughs> Segment two of our show sees a gentleman join us at the, uh, at the home base area. His name is Nick Davidson. Nick is an author and a professor and a teacher and uh, most of all has written a book called The Failure of Feminism. Uh, I first want to go, I first want to go back to uh, Gloria Allred. Uh, I don't want to upset you with this question now, Gloria, all right? I don't <laughs> but as a result of the Ferrara debacle, the best you now types could do this time around was trot out another congressional unknown, Pat Schroeder, who took one swing around the country and burst into tears. Can't you guys do any better than that? As a matter of fact, I'm very proud of Congressperson Pat Schroeder for trying to run for president because it's very difficult. It takes a lot of money, it takes a lot of courage, a lot of stamina, all of which she had. I just hope that other women will also have the courage to give it a try. Because I can't imagine that a woman as president could do a worse job than the man in the White House right now. The only way, of course, of course, you know, history will, history will write the final, the final line on that. And uh, they will show that Ronald Reagan did a very fine job of unifying this country. And if he did... If he did nothing else in his presidency, he saved us from Walter Mondale. Yeah. Now, I think, 
the feminist movement is dead. What about you guys, huh? Yeah. May, I, uh, may, I have, may I have a little gift that I bought uh, for Gloria Allred, please, in the uh, studio? Would you be kind enough, kind enough to bring this in? I would like to have this brought into the studio. We stuffed a guy, and uh, we've got him coming in. Uh, this is uh, for Gloria. This is for the feminist movement. Rest in peace. Mr. D your fantasy that you hope, that you wish in your heart of hearts that the women's movement is dead is not the reality because every single poll from the Associated Press to the network polls to all of the reputable polls have shown that it's alive and well and living in the hearts of millions of American people. So you represent the minority, the fringe, the part that's trying to hold back history and history, and you're not going to do it because we're going to win. My fantasy... My fantasy... My fantasy is that someday in another life I get to go to bed with every girl who has a tattoo on her bicep and another one on her butt. Because I've seen... Fortunately, in my single days, I saw a lot of that in the feminist movement. Mr. Davidson, Nick, uh, you've been listening to all this. What do, you, what, do you, what do you think about the feminist status today? Well, uh, <clears throat> <laughs> you better be careful. That pretty well sums up his position. Uh, I think that there is a small minority of dedicated activists who are hell-bent on transforming the society according to their kooky ideas. I don't think you can possibly claim that feminism represents the views of the majority of American women. That's ridiculous. What you've got now is a relatively small group of dedicated activists who are piggybacking on congressional committees, labor unions, university departments, and they are essentially trying to force their ideas onto society by slipping them in the back door. And I think it's time that Americans got together and realized just what they're trying to pull on. But don't you think they've already gotten together? I mean, Gloria says it's alive and well and living in the hearts of good-thinking people, all right? Uh, equality lives in my heart. Uh, feminism or chauvinism doesn't live in my heart. No, either one. I, I'm very anti-chauvinist, and I oppose all forms of chauvinism. I particularly... Especially when it's a woman who's performing. That's right. That's right, more Feminism... <laughs> It's true these days in the sense that feminism has become our official national philosophy of gender. You can scarcely stand up against it in public without getting reviled and attacked in most places. Uh, but uh, in essence, feminism is a form of female chauvinism. It is a cover for man hatred. Well, let me just and it starts out with an egalitarian premise, but it always winds up promoting simple female chauvinism. No, I mean, he'll go well, obviously, you haven't read the dictionary definition of feminism if you said that. Maybe you should start with the dictionary. Maybe not in your dictionary. You, before you wrote your book. Because feminism is simply the principle that equality should exist for women with men both legally, economically, socially, and politically. And that's all it means. It doesn't mean special favors or privileges for women doesn't mean special favors or privileges for men. Well, now you're trying to pull a smokescreen over our eyes, because if that was the definition of feminism, then I am a feminist, and Ronald Reagan is a feminist, and Morton Downey Jr. is a feminist. You, you won't find anybody who's not. I'll tell you the truth, is that feminism is the belief that men are collectively responsible for everything wrong with the world. Yeah. And I, for one, am tired of being a villain. I don't agree with that. I don't think men are responsible for everything wrong with the world. Most men are not responsible well, maybe for you're it. Not a it's only Martin Daddy Jr. that's responsible for what's wrong with the yeah. world. Listen, listen to this. Here, here's a feminist philosophy I want you to listen to. Comparable worth. Tell me what comparable worth is. Comparable worth is a principle for the 80s. It's the principle that women should earn uh, an equal amount of money for work of equal value. That is, we ask certain questions. For example, why should a parking lot attendant who works for a county earn more than a registered nurse? The registered nurse has to go to college for four years. She has to have a great deal of experience before she can do the job. She has very difficult working conditions, and she's working with life Why and death. Why is always a she? A I know a lot of male uh, nurses. But that's the whole point. But that's the point. It's because nursing is mainly a female-dominated, occupied occupation. And parking lot attendants are mainly male. And wherever then we have I an occupation... Then I say let females become parking lot attendants. <laughs> I'm all in favor. I'm all in favor. From now on, nurses can become parking lot But you attendants. see, that's part of the solution. 
You almost had it right, but as usual, you missed the whole story, and you only go for one part of the truth. No, so I, I guess I, it wrong. I think, Gloria, you're right. Great, Morton, we want to integrate all jobs. We want women to be able to be parking lot attendants. We want men to be able to be nurses. And they and want women to be shot happens, up on the battlefield until, just like men. Until that happens, we want the pay level raised for uh, for women who were in female occupied Aren't you going to create havoc? Like Aren't nursing? you going to create economic havoc if you do that? Well, the point is this. Why should women have to subsidize the workplace? Why should women have to earn less in the way of wages simply because men earn more and because big business doesn't want to pay women what they're due? I think that's wrong. Women should be paid what they're worth I and think they should more. too. I think when a woman has a, an equal job or a similar job that they should receive the same amount of money. I see no reason they shouldn't. But, that's but when you enough. start talking about this comparable worth, come on, glory. I mean, why shouldn't a nurse make as much as a garbage collector? Fine. Let the nurse become a garbage collector and ride that truck. That's a ridiculous. That's a go-back-to-Africa argument. It doesn't work here because the point is we need nurses. We don't want nurses to leave the profession. We need garbage collectors, too. They need to come and pick up this garbage you're spewing right now. All you're going to have to take care of you when you're in the hospital next time is a garbage collector. Let me tell you, some of the hospitals I've been in, pal, I'd rather have a garbage collector. Yeah. Taking care of me. What's comparable worth say to you, Nick? Well, I think uh, the uh, appropriate expression of comparable worth was uttered a couple years ago. It's the looniest idea since Looney Tunes. We have something called a free market you economy in this something society. Original. We have something called a free market economy in the society, and we don't need to come up with anything original about that. It works just fine. What comparable worth means is that some feminist bureaucrat will sit in Washington and tell employers, including small businessmen as well as big businessmen, what they can pay their workers. That's socialism, and it's not a very good idea. It doesn't work anywhere else. It's not going to work here. You just gave yourself away. I thought you might have had something smart to say until you did the old tactic of labeling feminism to be something to do with communism or socialism. Every time you run out of argument, no, but you go for the absolutely. red smear and it doesn't work because we're too bright to fall for it. Try it on your right-wing friends. Maybe they'll fall for it. Let me ask, let, let's play word association, all right, for just a second. Feminist role model, all right? Who should today's girls model themselves after? Well, I think, first of all, thank you for that, Gloria, already. No, first of all, I think that they ought to model themselves after their mothers and the, hero the heroes and the heroines in their own families that they like, and also look outside of their families to people that they want to be. If like they want to be an astronaut, if they want to be a lawyer or a doctor, if they want to be the best manager of a factory that they've ever seen, and hopefully they should learn through reading in, sc in schools and also through watching television, who the people are who have achieved something that they would like to achieve. I have a daughter, notice, and I'd like her to be in that she can Notice never be. was a housewife's name mentioned on... You can't, why can't they model themselves after a housewife, the most selfless people in the world, all right, who raise you to come on here and puke this blather to everyone? Why can't they model themselves after a housewife? Is there something wrong with your whole idea that women are discriminated against? Any event. I hope you're not having a problem with your hands because you're going like this, but the point no, is I was this. going like this. I know. And believe me, that's not Arthur Rose. Kind of like gorilla type. But let me just say this. Obviously, you weren't listening as usual. Try listening for a change. Oh, because I said, model themselves after their mothers, and some of those mothers are homemakers. Mm -hmm. They're not housewives, by the way. I don't know what a housewife is. Housewife is a person who is married to a house, and women aren't married to houses. They're married to husbands. And they're homemakers, not housewives. I like the word homemaker. Thank you. I like the homemaker. Next, I want to show you what the feminists have done to our divorce and custody laws, all right? Wait until you hear that one. Stand by. We'll be back. I see one... I see one poor, misguided soul in the audience holding up a sign that says, Feminism is not dead. Great. Wait until the night is over. Let me, uh, let me ask Gloria, do you feel the current uh, divorce and uh, child custody laws are fair to men? Uh, for the most part, uh, it is, divorce laws are unfair both to women and men. All They're right. more unfair to women, but in some cases they are also unfair to men. Well, why? It's funny that with feminism, things are always unfair to women, almost never unfair to men. Yeah. 
She did say they weren't fair to men, too, though, Nick, all right? What do you find about the divorce and custody laws? Well, uh, any guy who's ever been divorced and had to go for custody knows. I've been divorced a couple of times and had to have custody. Well, and well, I got the custody. What you never hear from feminists is that divorce is extremely rough on men, and uh, by and large, men do not get treated very well in the courts. No doubt women often get treated badly. You often hear from feminist statistics, usually garbled to the effect that uh, women do very badly financially in divorce and men, it's claimed, do well in it. I'm very skeptical about that. What I do know is that after divorce, men commit suicide five times more often than women. Now, if men are doing so well out of divorce, why are they killing themselves? Uh, maybe they've seen this show. I don't know why. <laughs> is a terrible thing and I hope that anybody who is even thinking of it will really contemplate counseling and will also understand that suicide isn't funny it's a very serious step it has implications for the whole family and to seek help and call a suicide hotline immediately and yes absolutely and I, but I want to know what you make of this evidence that men are suffering very badly does this support your feminist thesis that men have the better things in society and women have the worst things that women are discriminated against. Well, I'm extremely skeptical. Let's not forget also that women get custody in 90% of divorce cases. That means that America's divorced fathers are ripped away from their children. And you hear incredible things. Uh, I hear of fathers who are fit fathers who have not seen their kids in years and years. Okay. I, I, I see cases of it all the time. All right, all but, the time. but the point is this, that the reason that 90% of the women have custody is not because the men are being ripped away from their children. In many cases, it's because the men don't even ask for custody of the children. They have full-time jobs, and they don't want the responsibility. Yeah, we, we have this whole mess. Fathers don't care. Fathers don't care. You hear it all the time. You have all these books like Lenore Weitzman's The Divorce Revolution and Sylvia Hewlett's book, which paint this portrait of men as if they are just these unfeeling creatures who don't want to see their kids. Men can't win if a man supports his children after divorce, then he doesn't want to see them. If a man fights hard in the courts to retain custody of his kids or to get visitation rights, it's just because he wants to put one over. Or one of the other ploys that's, women that's are using now, constantly. one of the other ploys women are using in divorce for custody battles is, my husband sexually abused the child. Oh yeah, and then there's sexual abuse. Yeah. But there's one study of this that suggests that 60 percent of the allegations of sexual abuse against men in divorce cases are totally without foundation. Do you so fear what I have to say that you can't even let me talk? No, no, you've done plenty of talking and you'll do plenty more, I have no doubt. Gloria, let me ask Gloria about about alimony, all right? I the alimony system in this country is anything but a feminist social welfare system. That, that's really all it is, because uh, what you're doing is you're paying women to never get married again, to just stay living with that boyfriend they've had so they can keep the alimony coming in, and the poor sucker stays home paying it while someone else is getting the action. You know, I think, I think what you just said is a myth created by television talk shows such as this. It's not the reality of the situation. The reality is that 93% of all women never get any alimony whatsoever. Of the 7% who do get any alimony... What percentage of men don't get any alimony? Well, they don't need it, and that's why they're not getting it. And because also the women don't have the ability to pay it. Of the 7% of women who why are... Why don't they? I understand alimony, there's more women in the workforce now than there are men. But look what they're earning. They're in the low-paying, sex-segregated well, job that's, ghetto. That's, that's, the a, that's, the thing the when, that's another very that's questionable point. And as I was saying, Mort, before he so rudely interrupted me, but he'll probably try again as well because that's the way he is. As I was saying, most women can't even collect the spousal support that they're ordered. So if that's now, now, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not going to let you get away with that. Now, it is, it, it is a fact. It is a fact, and I admit is it. Is he having a horrible crisis? Go ahead. Uh, that, that's the real uh, devastating put down, Gloria. It is a fact that 50% of divorced fathers who are supposed to be paying child support don't do so. But what the feminists never tell us is that 50% of wives deny their husbands visitation rights. You bet. And no court will you enforce bet. visitation today. They don't do. I, I hear the story. I hear the stories all the time. The guy, I know of one particular story where the husband was seven minutes late on a court, court order. The child had to be home at 6 o'clock. The child got home at 6.07 and the wife went to court 
to deny him visitation rights. Fortunately, she lost. But can you imagine being married to a bitch like that? Yeah. Yeah. Now, if you've got a situation like this, is it a feminist movement we need to solve our problems? I resent your calling women dogs. I resent your objectification. You should, you should, you should, you should see some of the dates I've had. You wouldn't... Mort, can I well, get into with divorce is that it's unfair it's that to women, it's unfair to men, and a movement for, to help women is well, not going to solve let it. Let Gloria, let me hear what it's Gloria It's that kind of thing, Mort, that leads to women being raped. Because when women uh, are thought come on, of who as wants animals, to rape a dog? as people who are just objects, as people who are not human beings, it leads others who don't care about women, who want to hurt them and be hostile to them, to take advantage of them, you're absolutely right. And abuse and them. Women, but that's why we can't allow what you said. When women look Nick's at men have a stroke up objects, here. they're making the same mistake. Look, it took Adam and Eve to get us into whatever problems we've got, and it's going to take both Adam and Eve to get us out of them. Well, this whole notion that men are responsible for everything wrong with society is just a lot of hooey. It's female chauvinism. Don't, don't, don't worry, Nick, because I'll never look at you as a success object. Won't break my heart. <laughs> let me, let me go. Let me go to a gentleman who's, uh, aside from being a, a writer for Penthouse Magazine, is head of the National Organization for Men, Sidney Siller. Si and, and with more years' experience in the courts than Gloria has. Gloria, in your 11 years of experience as a lawyer, compared to my 35 years, you've made a joke about a lot of the issues here tonight. And I resent that. These are serious issues affecting over 50% of Americans. You in the feminist movement, as a leader, are responsible for taking a social issue and turning it into a political issue. You have, you are a de facto political party. You Thank have, you. well, I think you've got to conform to the rules of being a political party. You nominate candidates, you raise money, you, you even interfered in New York State during the terms of Governor Hugh Carey and presently Mario Cuomo as the National Organization for Women to have those governors veto after the state legislature passed it in successive years the joint child custody bill. Now that's as raw a deal as a man can get in this country not to have any input or legal responsibility in the upbringing of their children. Visitation Sydney. is insufficient to grow healthy children in America. Well, Sydney, it's very fitting that you're standing behind that loudmouth picture because you've I got think the it's biggest very one in America. Just say this. <laughs> biggest what, Sydney? As you biggest know, what? Loudmouth, oh, right oh. there. As you know, I have great respect for your work, but as usual, you've got your facts wrong here because I had nothing to do with what went on in New York State. Well, you are speaking for a movement that has done this through the United States. I'm why for wouldn't myself, you expect? Not that, not why wouldn't you expect, Sydney? Let's be realistic here. Why wouldn't you expect that the National Organization of Women would try to deny men any voice in the upbringing of their children? Men have no say if the woman has the baby in the first place. They took that right away from us with the Roe versus Wade. They got the baby in there. Scoop it out, baby. It's gone. The husband has nothing to say about it. As Groucho Marx used to say, any club that would have me as a member. I don't want to join, but the feminists do. Private clubs next. <laughs> well, as most of you have found, I have met my match tonight of Mighty Mouths in Gloria Allred, who has joined us. Sydney Siller, head of the National Organization of Men, is with us. Sydney, the latest pressing feminist issue seems to be the insatiable desire for women to spend all their time smoking cigars in a smelly locker room at some men's clubs. Got any objection to that? Well, uh, the objection that we made, that is uh, the National Organization for Men, Bob Grant, the uh, famous radio personality, and uh, Dr. Gerald Sabbath, the psychologist, uh, we uh, filed complaints with the State Human Rights Commission about the Colony and Cosmopolitan Clubs, two gender elitist clubs in New York City that will not accept men as members. And uh, not one feminist came out against a club that excluded men. Now, if you're going to have integrity, 
You've got to have integrity across the board. You've got to attack glory, and you try to get into the fr make the friars do your bidding on Thanksgiving weekend. And uh, uh, I understand you're a member of that club on the West Coast. You try to break the steam bath uh, at the Vista Hotel. She can take a steam bath with me. <laughs> All right. But more. I get steamed you up must... just sitting here with you, Mort. More. Wait until you're in the steam room, Gloria, Mort, baby. I, I think something's a, something's in a wind. This is the first time I ever saw her not wearing red. Gloria, <laughs> have a cigar, baby. Oh, Oh, my own lipstick and nail polish. <laughs> well, uh, I use it on the next feminist I go out with. Well, the point is, uh, uh, that's a little dangerous, Mort, and I'll tell you why. American men are wimpified enough without that. We, they, they, they've told the story, that is the feminists, for the last 22 years. They've never said anything good about American men. Gloria, I never heard say anything good about that's American men. That's because you weren't listening. Yes, I'm listening I'll to you. I'll give you an example if you stop filibustering things. No, I'm... Filibuster, yeah, you've been up there for how long now? Just listen for a minute and I'll no, tell you. No, I want to finish my point. You've well, never said anything good about like American him. men. You're to let me speak. Go ahead. Be I a coward. It's, it's not your show. It's not your show. Now look, you've never said anything good about American men or America. I can't get a word in. Now tell us, what have you said good about America? Okay. Yeah, you. Wait a second, let me hear what you men. said. Let me hear what you said here. As a matter of fact, I agree. I think that any club that is not distinctly private, such as the Friars Club, which I have a charge of discrimination against, and any club that is not distinctly private that is primarily female or only female should be opened up to both sexes. I totally agree with that. I said earlier, if you were listening, which you weren't, if men are the victims of sex discrimination, that's wrong. Usually it's women who are the victims, and that's wrong. Equality means equality, and I don't want special privileges for either sex. Yeah, but you keep talking about your daughters. You never mention the sons. Well, that's because I only we, have a daughter, but a, I care about sons. And let me no, give you, an you example. don't care about us. I'll give you an example. I represent a man, Anthony Flacco, and we're suing a club in Los Angeles. It's really a business that's open to the public called Women Only because it's a health spa, and any woman can be a member as long as she pays the right <laughs> amount of men. And Anthony wants to belong to the health spa? <laughs> huh? Does Anthony want to belong to the women's health spa? Anthony does not Join want to be Anthony. included in the whole of the this is an excellent example of the intrusions of the state that are in danger of totally destroying the sphere of the private in America. You brand anything a business, you can take the most private club and you claim it's a business. Well, it's not. People have a right to associate with whomever they want to in a free country. And when men are no longer I mean, allowed to Gloria, get seriously, men, and would you want to associate with, women, with Sydney we'll in no the same room? Free country. I want the right to... Be to... careful. Yeah, I want the right, I want the right at the Friars Club in Beverly Hills, of which I am a member, to also to use the steam room with everyone appropriately clothed, and I may not exercise that right, but, but my I, appropriate I clothing right in a steam room is naked. <laughs> my appropriate clothing, I go in a steam room to get naked. You go in there to wear your clothes to get them sweaty, not Sid? Not at all. Huh? Not at all. Yeah, well, if I were in a steam, steam room with you, I'd pay you to keep your clothes on. Oh. Which is an indication that the feminists can't stand to look at the body that satisfies them. <laughs> well... back to reading Penthouse and Playboy because that's the only dream you're going to be able to have with me. She's right. She's right. Because I've never seen her in those magazines. Yeah. Well, now I don't want to get, I let this, I don't want to let this sink to a personal attack. I think that Gloria is very attractive, a very nice person, all right? I find nothing unattractive about you at all. I'll speak to Bob Other than your mouth. I'll, I'll ask Bob to give her an offer. I find nothing attractive about you, other than your ideas. Let me ask you a question. Here you are saying, well, if it's all right for the men, it has to be all right for the women, and vice versa. And we've seen the Ivy League all integrated, men and women. What about Smith? What about Wellesley, those bastions of femininity that won't let any men in there? Why aren't you out working your tail off to make sure those colleges are integrated? <laughs> Well, let me just tell you this. First of all, I only practice on the West Coast, but I'm sure that there are attorneys in, on the East Coast who care about equality 
And they don't go out looking for problems because, believe me, thousands of problems come unto us, and we can only handle a very few of them because there are not enough attorneys oh, to you're care about equality question, of women with men. Gloria, if we had attorneys like this, if we had somebody Smith like Collins this man taking their time, taking their you time to You want Smith College fight? forcibly integrated by order of the federal government to with fight? troops to enforce it, right? For Is that what you want? Instead of fighting against those of us who care about equality, we Gloria, give us a, a straight world. answer for yeah, I want Smith. I want I Smith College forcibly integrated. <laughs> Next, we're going to introduce you to a woman, Gloria, all right, who will teach you how to marry the man of your choice. Stand by. <laughs> Uh, next, I want to introduce you to a lady who has written a book, a very successful book, Margaret Kent. She is the author, and she has written a book called How to Marry the Man of Your Choice. Now, when this book originally came out, and it still exists, there is a $95 guarantee. If you don't marry the man of your choice, you send the book back, you get $95. Bucks. That, that was the original premise on this book. Uh, Margaret, you've written that book, Advising Women How to Catch a Husband. What's the response to your book? What, what has it been, and uh, what do you think about the feminist movement? Well, I'll tell you, I've been very happy with the book because I think we ought to stop fighting between men and women and start to make a little more love here, mm -hmm. you see. <laughs> and so consequently, the book you has been a phenomenal that, success. A little, little more love there? <laughs> yeah, I think we can all use a lot more love in this world. That's and especially sure. with all this energy that's being out put tonight, I mean, it'd be a shame to go home and not use it uh, up. And something I'll go home and use fun. some. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not happy to hear that. Me, though. <laughs> But actually, the book has been a phenomenal I'd run success out of energy. because of the fact that it's the wonderful Wandas of this world that have the hardest time meeting and marrying men. Because they go out there and they send out the message that they're in control of their lives and the, they are decision makers and so on. And the message they're sending to men is, and if I wanted to meet you, fellow, I would. But here's where that wonderful Wanda reverts to a 14-year-old nitwit herself and expects the man to come over and say hi, forget about her power suit, her briefcase, you know, her business personality and so on. And so for gals, much like uh, Gloria and others who might be interested in marriage, we've got to learn a few things about how to get married. We've got to learn approachability. We've got to learn how to interview the guy for the job of husband so we don't waste a lot of time. We have to learn how to be selectively bitchy because, you know, I wish I had a dollar for every woman that says Don't have to teach Gloria that, honey. <laughs> Wait a minute, you have to be selectively bitchy, and that kind of means be bitchy in private, because I wish I had a dollar for every woman that said to me, I was so good to that man, and he ran off with that bitch. Of course he did, honey. You bored him to death. Yeah. And then... <laughs> let, me, let, me just, let me just read to Gloria, all right? Because you've got a lot of interesting things in here. Uh, ladies, listen to this very carefully. Let me look around and see if you're dressed appropriately. Yes. All right? When you select... This is shirts and blouses. When you select a blouse, choose one that has an open neckline, and a small collar. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> your, your, blouse, your blouse should draw attention to your breasts. But not be revealing. Wear a shirt-type blouse or other blouse with buttons in front. Good. All right. <laughs> These blouses show easy access to your breasts even if the blouse is not the slightest bit revealing. Let the man fantasize even though you won't give him, uh, don't give him permission to touch. T-shirts, of course, are great. It doesn't take much male imagination to know that in less than five seconds, he can get that off. Yeah! <laughs> now, what do you think? What well, you, do you see, think? many women want to dress in a very sexy fashion, but they don't want to be revealing. And one of the things that can make clothing very attractive to males is the ease with which it can be removed. So you can be very sexy and at the same time not be the slightest bit revealing. You know, this bothers me more because it means that women are spending a great deal of time trying to get the pleasure from, uh, from men and trying to please men. What a horrible and idea. I think... <laughs> Could you get an oxygen see, tank in here for Nick, please? I would rather see women. I would rather see women, instead of spending so much time in trying to deceive men, in trying to lure them, in trying to beat the seductors, instead of that, in developing themselves as real people, as people who are going to be friends with men and friends with women, as people who are going to be good friends for a long time in the future, because that's what I think makes a lasting marriage. Yes, and if all a woman does is try to lure a man by her breath, 
What happened you know, to her 20 years the later if she has to have has made a radical mastectomy because she has cancer? Does that mean he's going to leave her then? If he is not, if he <laughs> is not saying that he's going to if you don't have children, you have no one to carry on, first of all, your feminist movement. And I don't quite know how you're going to do that without a man. And I really don't know how you're going to do it without a man who wants to be with you. And I really don't know how you're going to attract a, a, great, a fantastic man if you don't give him some signs of approachability. Because in essence, the smarter the man is and the more he has to offer, the more reassurance he needs that somebody like you, who can make it to the front page of a newspaper and call him turkey, you know, would not reject him. And so... <laughs> You, of all people, if you were interested in this kind of thing, and people like you, would just have to give the clues that, yes, okay, I may be standing for this cause, but on the other hand, I do like men, I am interested in marriage, and you have to make at least enough aggressive movements that you give that clues that you're not what going to do you do? What did you do to attract your man? Well, I met him at a party, and um, I knew he was the guest of honor. I also knew he was a very well-known attorney, and rather snobbish. So I went up to him, and I said, hi, you must be the photographer. Because it was just enough... <laughs> you see, that I hit on the male ego, because after all, she knows, we all know here, the male has an enormous ego that's eggshell fragile. Oh, and you have a small one, right? No, they have a big one, small too, but they get they nurturing. Mean... No, oh, no. All right. They get yeah, nurturing from other women. That's the kind of sexist stereotyping that I'm against. I don't think all men have big egos. I don't think all women have little egos. That's a sexist stereotype. It's a generalization that's <laughs> unfair about men. <laughs> <laughs> Well, let me let me let me ask Gloria, Margaret. Let, let me ask Gloria just Pardon a second. Me? What do you use to attract a man? I don't spend my time no, trying I... to attract a man. I, you know, if are you as, interested in men? If, as and when I decide to get married again, and I have been married, okay. and I'm not married this time, if I decide to get married again, then I'm sure that I will be with a person who, first of all, is going to be a good friend to me, and second of all, is a person that I'm going to be proud to be with. And third of all, as a person that I can depend on that meets my needs and I meet his needs. I hope that that's the kind of person that I will be with because that's the only kind of person that I want to be with. I'm glad you said his needs because without that, one would have never have known what sex this person was. <laughs> <laughs> Margaret? I'm not so sure what sex you are. <laughs> Congratu congratulations, you two. On the dating game, you have won a trip to the Cayman Islands I'm in I'm separate I'm bedrooms. I'm we'll be back in just a second to talk to our audience. <laughs> All right, quickly, this young man here has a complaint about uh, feminism in the courtroom. That's right. I, I work for the security service of Brooks, and the Equal Rights decided to put women to work because they, they say equal opportunity for everyone. And they have put our lives in several, several times in danger. Why? Because they don't know how to do the job in the first place, and they're not, no, and they're not strong enough, and they're not bright enough to do the job. Oh, uh, well, man, we're not going to get into that. Because women, if you check the scores in universities and that's SATs and everything else, I don't know what they're doing. women, believe me, are as bright as we are. I'm never going to buy that argument, all right? Thanks for the argument. That was a bad one. Sydney, any closing 20-minute remarks? Yes, I'd 20 like 20-second remarks. All right, I'd like to say to uh, everyone here that the um, problem with the feminist movement is that it is a de facto political party we're going to start to see the emergence when Patricia Schroeder and Huck Clack make stops around the country in various uh, uh, markets in the country, the 50 major markets. Wrap They're it going up to... for us, Gloria. Let me just say this, that a man of quality is not threatened by a woman of equality. Oh, that's... And I think that you're a man of equality. I hope, I hope, listen, I hope that Where's women... Where's those red socks? Women should become the people that they wanted to marry. If they wanted to be to marry a lawyer, they should become a lawyer. If they wanted to, uh, if they admire a man with a sense of humor, let them develop a sense of humor. We're not going to spend the rest of our lives trying to lure you. We'll become people in let our own Let me tell you life. something, folks. Let me tell you something. After listening to Gloria tonight, I'm going to present her with my jockey underwear. The feminist movement was originally uh, really intended to advance the cause of women. Well, that, of course, is okay until the militant, all right, men-haters take over. 
and they have taken over. It's not working. It's not working. It's dead. It's gone. Women are equal. Women are equal. Let's kiss feminism goodbye. Bye.